Heya, welcome to some more Math with a Black Rat. In this video, Zeke and I are going to show you two trigonometric identities that you need to know and that are used a lot at AS level when you do A-level math. Okay, so I'm going to start with the proof of the first one and then a proof of the second one and then we'll look at um, using it in some examples for how you can solve equations using these identities. Okay, thank you, Zeke. So first, we'll, I want to show you a proof of this. Okay, so trigonometry is all about right triangles. So I like to do my proofs using right triangles where I can. So let's put the angle theta down in the bottom corner. And I will label my triangle, the vertices, capital letters, the sides opposite by little letters, like so. So I can see that the tangent of my angle theta is going to involve the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. That's A over B. Okay, I, I also can see that the sine of theta is going to be A divided by C, that's my opposite over hypotenuse, and my cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's B over C. So the claim is that the tangent is equivalent to the sine divided by the cosine. So let's look at the sine divided by the cosine with our fractions here. Okay, so sine divided by cosine of our angle theta, well, that's going to be the fraction A over C divided by the fraction B over C. There's a few ways to shake that fraction out. One really nice way to do it is to multiply the top and the bottom by the number C. You're multiplying by the number one C divided by C is the number one. So I'm multiplying this big compound fraction by the number one. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, you multiply the denominators, and there's your result. So if I say A over C times C, those C's will, you know, divide by C, multiply by C, I'll be left with A. Same story down here. B divided by C times C is going to leave me with B. And A over B is equal to the tangent of my angle theta, which is what I wanted. And there's the proof. If you don't like this for fractions, you can go through classic frac excuse me, classic fraction division. That's a good name for a band, isn't it? Classic fraction division. Okay, so I have A over C divided by B over C, so I can write it horizontally with the division sign. And we learned that you keep, change, and flip. That's kind of a blind rule, but it's a popular one that we learn. If you ever want to see that hashed out for why that's true, um, I can make another video about that. Let me know. Let me know. I'll take requests. Okay, so again, um, I'm going to multiply. I've changed the multiplication now from division. I've changed B over C to C over, C over B, and the C's again will you know, divide themselves out, and I'll be left with A over B. Okay, so your big takeaway. Oh, where's my color? I should have put my color out first. Um, your big takeaway here is that the tangent can always be expressed as sine divided by cosine of the same angle. Or if you have a sine divided by a cosine of the same angle, you can swap it out for a tangent of that angle. And that's a really useful identity. Okay, the second one, I don't know, I guess he can be pink today. I wonder when I teach my students, when I use colors, to illustrate concepts. I wonder if my students learn the ideas with the colors. So I wonder if sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta being equivalent to one will be pink for you as you do your math. I have no idea. You'll have to let me know. I don't have a color associated in my head yet. Maybe it will be pink for me. Okay, so let's look at why this is true. I'm going to use my same triangle. So there's a divider. I know that the sine of theta, that can be written as a divided by c, according to how I set my sides up. So if I want the sine squared theta, that's going to be a squared over c squared. And the cosine squared is going to be b squared over c squared. And I hope you're happy. I hope you're happy. That's not what I mean to say. I hope that's comfortable. I hope you're comfortable with that step. So let's look at what happens when I add that together. Okay, so sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, 
Well, that's going to be my a squared over c squared plus my b squared over c squared, same denominator. So a squared plus b squared on the top and c squared in the denominator there. And then I think, hmm, well, that's, that's a pretty shape, but it doesn't really look like the number one. And then I remember we're in a right triangle. Not only can we do trigonometry, we also get Pythagoras. So we say, oh yeah, Pythagoras. I remember him with a G. Pythagoras has short side squared plus the other short side squared equals the hypotenuse squared. We call the short sides legs. They don't teach that in, in British teaching as far as I can tell. Those are called legs. And he's your hypotenuse. Okay, so leg squared plus the other leg squared is the hypotenuse squared. And in the letters I've used, a squared plus b squared is c squared. Well, hey, hot diggity, look at that. There's your a squared plus b squared. That's the same thing as c squared. So I swapped out the top because of Pythagoras. And c squared divided by c squared, there's my number one. And I didn't specify what the angle was. Theta, theta, excuse me, I'm excited tonight. Theta can be any angle you like, and the relationship holds. So that's why we call it an identity. That's what these three bars, instead of a two bar equal sign, we have a three bar equal sign. And it means identity. Here's your word identities. Whoops, sorry, that's off camera. Wow, okay. Someday I'll be super professional, but not today. So identities use this special equal sign, and it means that the relationship is true for every value of your variable. That's different from an equation where we're setting two quantities equal and figuring out what variable value makes that true. This is true for every value. You're just restating the same idea. So these are big ones that you need to learn and you need to be comfortable and familiar with them. I'm not sure you need to know the, the proofs. It's nice to know the proofs, um, but you need to be familiar and remember how to use them. So let's look at how to use those suckers. Let's do, let's do a situation where you use the tangent substitution. So here's a favorite thing to do that WJEC likes on their exam questions. Presumably other exam boards like to do it too. So maybe you've got an equation that goes something like five times the sine of theta equals negative two times the cosine of theta. Or maybe you had to do some algebra and you get yourself to this point, I don't know, and you're looking at this going, eh, I've got sines and I've got cosines and that's not quite so straightforward as just having something clean like sine of theta equals 0 0.1. I've got a mix and match and I don't like it. Then you're like, wait a minute, hang on, I know what to do with this. A plain old sine, a plain old cosine, I can divide both sides by the cosine of theta and then I'll have a sine divided by cosine situation, and I can swap out for tangent. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide both sides by the cosine of theta and by the number 5, but you don't have to do it all at once if you don't like it. Okay, so now I'm going to divide both sides by the number 5. Sine theta divided by cosine theta is negative 2 fifths, and I can swap them out for tangent. That's the tangent of theta because my angles are the same. The tangent of theta equals minus 2 fifths, and now I'm in a world I know what to do with that. So the calculator, well, to write it properly, you'd say the tangent inverse, the inverse tangent, the inverse tangent of negative 2 fifths will give me the angle. Do not ever say tangent to the minus one. If I catch you saying tangent to the minus one, I will send the math place for you at three in the morning and it won't be pretty and nobody will like it. That is inverse tangent. Don't say to the minus one, that that sounds different. And I can, maybe I'll do a whole video on that at some point. But okay, we pronounce that inverse tangent. So make sure you're in degrees. This probably doesn't show up very nicely for you. Grab your own calculator so you can follow along here. And if you do inverse tangent of minus 2 fifths, the calculator throws you out an angle of negative 21.8 degrees. I'm only going to one decimal place because I don't care any further today. You might care to do more decimal places, and by all means, knock yourself out. 
Okay, so negative 21.8 is what the calculator throws up. But often, we want values between 0 and 360. Sometimes between 0 and 180, but sometimes the questions say between 0 and 360. So what do you do with this? And this is a whole trigonometry conversation that I haven't made a video about yet, but I certainly drag all my students through it. This is the whole thing about reference angles and cast diagrams. Okay, so I'm going to talk in those terms, and if that doesn't make sense to you, that's okay. It means you need another conversation. So ask, ask your teacher, ask a friend, ask me, um, but I'm proceeding with the idea that you understand about reference angles. Okay, so this negative angle, he's a fourth quadrant angle, and the reference angle associated with him is a positive 21.8 degrees. Okay, and when I look at my tangent equation here, I need to think about the angles I need to fish out. Okay, the tangent value is negative you're nearly always looking for two angles. The tangent value here is negative, so that means I want angles in the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant, because that's where tangent is negative. That's your cast diagram. Okay, this shows where everything is positive. So if I need tangent to be negative, I need to be in the second and the fourth quadrants. The calculator gave me a fourth quadrant angle, but as a negative version. So I'm just going to convert everything into uh, angles between 0 and 360. Okay, so you do this through the reference angle. So the calculator throws you at an angle. Always write down what the reference angle is. Then you use that reference angle to fish, fish out your second quadrant and your fourth quadrant angles. So who in the second quadrant has a reference angle of 21.8 degrees? If you're my student, reference angles are always blue. There's a color coding that sticks. Okay, if that angle is 21.8 degrees, then the angle I'm looking for is 180 minus 21.8 degrees. And if you tap that through your calculator, your second quadrant angle is going to be 158.2 degrees, and you should verify that. Okay, I found that through the reference angle. Your fourth quadrant angle, Here's an angle in the fourth quadrant. That means that the reference angle lives here. And yeah, you're right. You could have said minus 21.8 degrees, and that's a perfectly lovely answer. But exam boards get all picky and say, oh, I want to be between 0 and 360. And you're like, OK, fine. Make me do the work. OK, what else? I'm smart. I can deal with it. So if you have a, a reference angle for a fourth quadrant angle, you're going to say 360 minus 21.8 degrees. Again, if I'm talking way too fast for you, then it means you need a full proper conversation um, on cast. Um, and that, that's, that's why you're struggling. Hit me up if you need it. Happy to talk. But these sorts of equations assume that you're fluent in cast and all that business. Okay, so your two answers here are 158.2 degrees and 338.2 degrees. Those are your answers for this equation for angles that fall between 0 and 360. I hope that was clear. The big deal, what color did I make tangent? That was, oh dear, that was a blue color. Okay, the big deal here was taking him into a tangent situation. Okay, if you got plain old sines and plain old cosines, same size angle, a good thing to try is can you wiggle it down into tangent equals some number? Grand. Okay, that's the first identity. Let's have a clean sheet of paper and let's look at an example for how to play with sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Okay, so here's what I made earlier. It's nice when you don't pull them off the top of your head. Okay. Well, nicer for you when I don't do that, I guess. Okay, don't let me make things up without checking them first. Okay, so suppose you've got an equation like this. 3 times the sine squared of theta, subtract 5 times the cosine of theta, and that gives you the number 1. And you're trying to solve for theta. Again, we'll take theta between 0 and 360 degrees. That's a 6. You should know that that's a 6, but it's also nice to write your numbers so they look like what they're supposed to be. Mad skills. Okay, so when I look at him, 
I know what to do for two reasons. One, we are in the safety of A-level mathematics, and that means that the types of things we look at are all, we're, we're, we're in a specific corner of the playground, <laughs> so things aren't going to be too hairy or too wild or too bizarre looking. They're going to be variations on things that we know. This is in the format of a hidden quadratic. It is a perennial favorite of A-level and of further A-level maths, hidden quadratics. You thought you had your fill in GCSE, ha 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 ha. No, I <laughs> go for miles with quadratic shapes because we know how to solve quadratics. So we can look at similar situations that have quadratic shapes behind them. Okay, and the reason I know that one is because A-level math has particular flavors that they hit. So when you show me something, I go, oh yeah, they're talking about that thing again. But I also know it mathematically in a general, we could be anywhere in mathematics uh, context because I've got a plain old cosine, but my sine is squared. I've got a mix and match of somebody squared and somebody not squared. You might have a cosine squared and a plain old sine. You see that at AS. When you get into A2 mathematics, they'll throw tangents and secants and cosecants and cotangents into the same kind of general shape, but you'll learn that next year at A2. At AS, you're just riffing on sine squares or maybe cosine squares and plain old sines or maybe plain old cosine. Okay, so what we want to do is we're going to write all of this in terms of one trig flavor. And the flavor I'm going to pick is cosine because he's the guy who's not squared. And this is what I'm going to do. So here's my magic identity. It's not magic, we just saw the proof. Sine squared plus cosine squared, you can say equals. We know it's an identity. If you want to write the equal sign for simplicity, that's okay. That's okay. Um, Sine squared plus cosine squared is equivalent to one. So if I say sine squared theta equals one subtract cosine squared theta, so I've subtracted cosine squared from both sides, that means that I can swap out sine squared for him instead. So if I substitute sine squared for one minus cosine squared theta, then my equation will be all in terms of cosine theta. So it will look like this. Remember your brackets three brackets, so three times the quantity, one minus cosine squared theta, subtract five cosine theta still equals one. Multiply out the brackets, gather up your bits. I'm going to shove everything over onto the right hand side because I just, I don't want to look at negatives if I don't have to, and I want to set it equal to zero anyways. So I'm going to add three cosine squared theta to both sides. I'm going to add five cosine theta to both sides. I'm going to subtract three from both sides. And there I am. Those are pretty dodgy looking. You should write it nicely. I hope, you know, most of my students have better handwriting than I do. And I'm glad for that. Okay, low bar, sorry. I hope your handwriting is nice and tidy. <laughs> okay, that's a whole nother conversation. All right, so zero. Uh, equals 3 cosine squared theta plus 5 cosine theta minus 2. And this is your hidden quadratic. And if that weirds you out, make a substitution. Um, you can use the letter A or whatever makes you happy. Okay, so instead of saying cosine theta, I'm going to say the letter A. That's a useful... We've had pink and blue. Let's have a green happy face. Okay, that's a useful... Thing to do so you can see the shapes better. So that means you've got 3a squared plus 5a subtract 2 and I hope it's clear how I've done that substitution. I'll solve for a then I'll come back to him and solve for theta. So these are nearly always written so they will factorize. You're welcome because they just don't want to drag, there's no point dragging you through the quadratic formula when they want to test your trigonometric knowledge. Why, why make you suffer with icky square roots and horrible decimals? Um, this is enough to think about. So they usually do factorize. Okay, so 
If you need a conversation about how I'm going to do this factorizing, please hit me up. I have plenty to say. I'm going to assume that you're fluent in factorizing these suckers. Um, I'll say briefly my thought process. That's a subtract. So I know I'm either going to have an add there and a subtract there, or a subtract there and an add there. That number is a 3, so it's going to be a 3 and a 1. I don't know who gets the add and the subtract. And that's going to be a 2 and a 1. And I don't know if the 2 goes there like that, or if it goes the other way around as a 1 and a 2. And I have to play whether I'm subtracting the 1 or adding the 1. So it's a bit of trial and error. But I've done this for so long through so many examples that I can do it very, very quickly. And the idea is, is to have fluency. OK, so 3a and a is going to be a plus or minus split. The 2 goes somewhere, the 1 goes somewhere. I'm trying to get a 5. So I know 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times, uh, excuse me, 3 times 2 is 6. 1 times 1 is 1. That's going to get me a 5 with a plus or minus combination. That's positive 5, so subtract 1, add 2. There's our factorization. Again, if that was a mystery, um, I'm assuming that you're fluent in that. And there's plenty of conversation for, for how I know how to do that. Here's a factorization. Why do I care about factorizing? Because when you have thing squared times other thing, excuse me, where where am I today? When you have thing times other thing and the product is zero, it squares all the way down. When you have thing times other thing and that product gives you zero, it means one of the things better be zero or the other thing better be zero because that's how you get to zero when you multiply. Somebody's got to be zero. You know this. I'll move on. All right, so that means that a equals a third or a equals minus 2. So now I come back into cosine. So I say that the cosine of my angle is a third or the cosine of my angle is negative 2. Now this is interesting. Cosine, here's a picture. Of, here's a crummy picture of cosine. Well, I guess it's a pretty good picture of cosine. Okay. He never gets higher than 1, and he never gets lower than minus 1. So to say that he equals 2, um, the answer is no. <laughs> cosine theta will never give you minus 2. And if you try to do inverse cosine, oops, my goodness, inverse cosine on your calculator, I don't know if that shows up for you. You'll have to, to type it in yourself. Okay, if you do cosine inverse of negative 2, your calculator will cry because there's, there's no way that cosine will ever dip down as far as negative 2. So the correct answer is math says no. Well, you could say no solution. I like to say math says no. Your choice. It's a style difference. Okay, but over here we can fish out some numbers for theta. That works. So again, I'm thinking about reference angles and cast diagrams. Um, it's a cosine. One third is positive, so I'm looking for angles in the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant in terms of cast. Yeah, I want the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. So I do cosine inverse on one third, and the calculator spits out cosine inverse of one third. Whoops. Put your brackets in the right place. Cosine inverse of a third. 70.5 degrees. You can do more decimal places if you like. I don't care. I'm going to do one decimal place. 70.5 degrees. Okay, and that's already our first quadrant angle. And it's also the reference angle. The reference angle, if you have a nice positive first quadrant angle, then your reference angle is still 70.5 degrees. I've gone off camera. Have I gone off camera? My gods, I am so sorry. It's hard to do video at home with balancing a phone on a stack of books. High tech. We are high tech. Okay, so calculator gave me 70.5 degrees. I know that's a first quadrant angle that will give me what I'm looking for. I also know that the reference angle is 70.5 degrees because that's the angle down to the x-axis. I'm assuming you're fluent in this. Okay, I need to fish out the fourth quadrant angle. So what fourth quadrant angle has a reference angle of 70.5 degrees. Well, that's going to be 360. Subtract that. So I'm going to say 360 minus, my goodness, 360 minus answer. 
and that coughs up 289.5 degrees. I'm rounding to one decimal place. My goodness, you can't see that, can you? There you go, something like that. You know, you gotta follow on, follow along at home because <laughs> I'm not sophisticated to give you super, super nice setups. I'm sorry, I hope this is helpful. So your fourth quadrant angle shakes out as 289.5 degrees. And 289.5 degrees and 70.5 degrees. And those two angles came from one of your factors when you're trying to solve this equation. When you get good at it and you're not trying to do it on film spelled out in all lavish detail, you can probably write it a lot more succinctly than I did. I wrote it big to try to show it nicely for you. Okay, so it turns out that this equation only has two solutions between 0 and 360 degrees. If this other factor had given me a viable scenario, you know, cosine theta equals 0 0.5 or something, or two sevenths, then I would have gotten two answers from him. So sometimes, sometimes these hidden quadratics gives, give you four angles that will work. Um, you just have to play with it and see. I wanted to, to show you one where you get no solution for one of your factors, because that's, that's an interesting case. Okay, I hope this has been helpful and not too, too wonky. And if you have any questions, um, give me a shout. Okay, thanks for watching.